Does the Toyota Tacoma rank number one amongst buyers? Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here, and that's right. Does the Toyota Tacoma rank number one amongst buyers? You know, we see these surveys all the time, but they're not done by buyers. They're done by guys that sit behind desks, that look at numbers, maybe go out and open the door on a truck, and then go back inside and write a whole big article about why the truck is or is not number one. I would bet you that most of these folks have never even owned one let alone maybe even been in one, I don't know. So I wanted to take a look at what real buyers, people like you and me, think about the Toyota Tacoma, right? So first of all, let me give you the short answer, and it's a disappointing answer. And that is no, it does not rank number one amongst buyers, which is kind of odd since it's the number one selling truck. To me, that means there's a lot of people out there buying the Toyota Tacoma that don't necessarily like it. So let's go through, I'll tell you who the top four are and why people do and do not like them. Now, I will say right off that the top two or number one was a tie. So we really have three others, right? So let's start off with number three then. And that is the Jeep Gladiator, which I happen to have one as well. Uh, what people like about the Jeep Gladiator, first of all, they say they like how it makes them feel at startup. So apparently it's that sensation you get when you push the button and all the gauges light up and the truck turns over. You feel that little vibration in it when it starts up and that's what people like. Number two, the quality of interior materials which I've got to agree with. The stuff inside the Jeep, the surfaces, the way things look, the color of them, all that stuff seems to be pretty good quality. I haven't had any failures or problems with any of those items in my Jeep Gladiator. And number three, the sound system. They like the sound system. Um, I'm neither here nor there, and I might actually disagree and state that the Tacoma with the tweeter upgrade Let's clarify, with the tweeter upgrade, actually sounds better. But from a stock standpoint, I'd probably rank them pretty equally, really. Uh, what don't they like about the Jeep Gladiator? Not quiet enough while driving. So it makes too much noise. Well, it is a Jeep, right? I mean, there's really zero insulation in it. I mean, you have the top, if it's cloth, there's no insulation. If you have a hard top, it's just a thin layer of whatever, composite material, fiberglass, whatever it is. And it's like a driving block. So yeah, I suspect people should have known that before they bought it, I think. But anyway, number two, fuel economy and drive range per tank. They don't think it gets good enough gas mileage. In other words, and they don't think it holds enough gas to give them long enough range for where they want to go. Number three, steering and handling in normal driving. And you know, this has been a complaint I've heard off and on about the Gladiator, that it kind of rides the road. That's kind of common with Jeeps though. I do find it not to be so much true, if at all, in the Gladiator as compared to the Wrangler over there. That thing rides the cup of the road like crazy. Number two, and this is where our beloved Toyota Tacoma falls. It's number two. Really number three, because there's a tie for number one, right? But for lack of argument, we're calling it number two. What do people like about the Toyota Tacoma? Well, they say the, this one is really weird. The ability to hold personal items where you want them. I guess that means that there are enough spots to put stuff so that it's within easy reach or you know where it is when you put it there, right? So the cup holders, the cubby under the front, maybe the little slot in the door, uh, the console, the center console area, that's, that's how I'm interpreting that. Number two, protection in an accident. So people feel that the Jeep Gladiator, or the Toyota Tacoma, I should say, is pretty darn safe and they feel 
pretty protected and secure in the event that they should be in an accident. Number three, the quietness of the cab while driving. Now see, I would agree with that, but I know there are a lot of people that don't because I get comments on the channel of people saying that it's too loud, it's too noisy, the glass is too thin. People even said that they increased the thickness of the glass in the Tacoma for the 2020 and beyond. I don't know if that's really true or not, but that's what people say. Uh, what people do not like about the Tacoma, and this one I could not agree with more, engine power. It does not have enough oomph. And man, that is true. I would say that all day, every day, the Toyota Tacoma needs more power. Number two, the audio system sound quality. Um, again, it's not great unless you do the tweeter mod, it's better. Um, it's not great stock, I, I wouldn't disagree with that, but it's probably average equivalent to most of the others out there, I would say. And number three, how it makes you feel at startup. What is this? So I guess people don't like the way things look. And when you push the button or turn the key, if you have a manual like I do, they just don't like the way it, maybe it feels, maybe the way it sounds when it starts. I know there's a lot of people out there and several have asked me what I think about the sound and they compare it to a diesel. Like it, it sounds like a diesel when it's sitting there running, some ticking and noises and stuff. I'm thinking that's what people are referring to. Uh, let's move on to the number ones. I guess what Toyota should be shooting for as far as buyers are concerned with the Tacoma. First number one I'll mention in no particular order is the GMC Canyon. What do people like about it? Engine power. They feel it has adequate power. Number two, quietness in the cab. Well, I think the GMC version is the upper scale Canyon version, if you will, uh, for Chevy, GM, GM. Uh, so they think it sounds pretty quiet. And number three, fuel economy. And this is strange because it's not that great and it's not that much different than any of the others, 17 to 25 or 17 and 25 miles per gallon. Um, and the range, they like the range. So I'm guessing uh, that the, the GMC Canyon must have um, a bigger tank so people could drive further before they have to put gas in it, I guess. What don't they like about it? Number one, the truck safety systems. I guess that means how you put the seatbelt on, I guess. They don't like the safety systems. Two, the ability to hold personal items where you want them. So apparently, unlike the Tacoma, they don't have enough slots and nooks and crannies to stick stuff so that you can, you know, put all your personal stuff where you want it, I suppose. And number three, the ease of getting in and out of the front seats. I can see that. The Tacoma it does take a little bit of effort to get in and out of because of that low line in the roof, right? You kind of have to, you do a little dance move to get in, right? You know, passenger side, driver's side. So I can see how that, that could be important. Now let's look at the other number one, and that is the Chevy Colorado. I mean, it makes sense, right? If the Canyon is number one, the Colorado must be number one too in the event of a tie. So what do people like about it? Well, these are gonna be pretty much the same. Um, engine power, you know, it, it's a, the same engine, so why wouldn't they? Fuel economy uh, and drive range. Now this is interesting because it actually gets worse gas mileage than the GMC version, 16 to 25 miles per gallon. But again, I'm guessing it has a bigger tank so you can go further, even though it gets worse fuel economy before you have to fill up. Number three, steering and handling in normal conditions. So they like the way it steers and the way that it handles. What people do not like about the Chevy Colorado, rear seat comfort. I've heard that a lot about the Toyota Tacoma. The truck safety systems, again, how many of you are aware of these systems? I mean, really, if it has an airbag, a seat belt, I guess maybe they're talking about blind spot monitoring and adaptive cruise control and maybe automatic braking, that kind of thing. Number three, the truck's ability to hold personal items where you want them. Once again, there aren't enough spots to put your stuff. So it's interesting in all of this, we didn't have any mention of the Nissan Frontier, which I find odd. I guess it scored so badly they didn't want to talk about it. Or the Honda Ridgeline. Now, 
from my own perspective, and I don't have anything against the Honda Ridgeline, but I don't consider the Honda Ridgeline to be a truck truck. So I don't think it really should be in the same category as truck trucks anyway. So I'm guessing maybe that's why it wasn't considered here. Who knows? I don't know. So anyway, that's kind of a rundown of what real people, you and me, buyers and owners, um, rank these trucks at. Again, the Tacoma's not number one, but it isn't number four either. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm curious. Do you like the Toyota Tacoma that you have? Or is there something better that maybe you wish you'd have gotten? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels. Rob Motive JT, all about that 2020 Jeep Gladiator. And Rob Motive Civic, about my experiences with the Honda Civic Sport Hatch and the Honda Civic Type R. Give them a look, check them out. And if you like them, I don't know why the heck you wouldn't subscribe. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.